This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on the significance of 108th Indian Science Congress. The participants are Dr. Kinkini Das Gupta Mishra, Senior Scientist, Vigyan Prasar and Ombesh Upadhyay, AIR Correspondent. Today, Prime Minister, in his inaugural address at Indian Science Congress, talked a lot about how science can be used in public welfare and various other vision that India could lead the world with its science and innovation technology. In the very beginning, I would like to know from you that what is the theme of the 108th Indian Science Congress and what is its significance? The theme of 108th Indian Science Congress is Science and Technology for Sustainable Development with Women Empowerment, which started today, that is 3rd of January, and will be continuing till 7 January 2023 at Nagpur. Before I go on to the significance of this year's theme, I just would like to give you a little background. The Indian Science Congress started in the year 1914 with the objective to advance and promote the cause of science in India and to stimulate the scientific research in India with an annual meeting of uh, researchers and scientists. The first meeting of Indian Science Congress was held in 1914 in Calcutta at the premises of Asiatic Society. And uh, in the first session, there were only 105 scientists from different parts of the world who attended, and 35 papers were presented. From this modest beginning, Indian Science Congress has grown into a strong fraternity with more than 60,000 members till date, and it is now 110 years old. The significance of this year's theme is focused on science and technology enabled growth and development of nation. The theme is aligned with the sustainable development global goals, which have been identified by United Nations, which are a collection of 17 interlinked objectives designed to serve as a blueprint for people and prosperity. As Honorable Prime Minister has said in his inaugural speech today, science should make India Atmanirbhar. The 108th edition of Indian Science Congress 2023 also aims to deliberate on equity and inclusion of women to achieve the SDG indicators for the holistic development of the society. As the Honorable Prime Minister has said, our thinking is not just that we should empower women via science, but also empowering science by the contribution of women. It is a bi-directional approach and contribution of women would help enriching the science, technology, innovation capacity and absorption at the ground. Indeed, uh, Dr. Mishra, when we talk about Prime Minister Modi's inaugural address, he also highlighted the role of scientific strength in our India's development journey over the next 25 years to say that about 100 years of Indian independence. Dr. Mishra, I want to know from you what meaning and great responsibility does this hold? As you know, India has just celebrated Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa to commemorate uh, 75 years of its independence. As the country moves towards Azadi Ka Amrit Kaal, which is the centenary celebrations of India's independence, it is imperative to boost the existing economy through science, technology and innovation efforts and transform it into a knowledge economy. India has the third largest scientific and technical manpower in the world, that is the human resources. And as the recent numbers specify, we have 1,000 plus universities inculcating scientific knowledge and thinking in routine life. We rank third in the world in the number of PhDs in science and engineering and number of research publications. So government is poised to make India a global center of research and innovation in this Amrit Kal. Science, technology related research must reach to the local level. Today, Honorable Prime Minister talked about the power of data and technology in 21st century. This needs to be nurtured to position India in futuristic areas and lead Industry 4.0. Indeed, Dr. Misha, when we are talking about what will be the road ahead, this year's Indian Science Congress is also paying a tribute to what we achieved and where we are today. To mention that this year we are also witnessing the Mega Expo Pride of India, which will showcase the prominent developments and the significant contributions largely of Indian science and technology to the society. Dr. Mishra, could you please share something about this with us? Actually, the Pride of India is a mega expo, as you have rightly said. It is the special attraction at the 108th Indian Science Congress. The prominent developments, the major achievements and the significant contributions 
largely of Indian science and technology to society, is being showcased in the exhibition. The India's contribution to the global science, to the world science in last 75 years has been, you know, captured and will be showcased at Pride of India Mega Expo. How Indian science and Indian scientists have shaped the science and technology and research and development is the main aim of showcasing and presenting through exhibits and other audio video medium at the Pride of India Mega Expo. Aligning with the theme of this year, Dr. Mishra, how the Indian Science Congress aims to ideate in direction to increase the number of women in higher teaching or it be research and the science and technology industry. See, the principle behind conducting annual Indian Science Congress is to celebrate science in India and spread the science, education and opportunities to cater to diverse group of target audiences, including women. There are tens of large-scale programs and schemes meant for creating a niche area for women. Some of the major programs and schemes that have been rolled out by Government of India through different ministries and departments, I just would like to highlight some of them. SERB Power Research Grant for Research in Basic Sciences and Engineering Streams. SERB Power Mobility Grant, which allows international research collaboration. There is SERB Power Translation Grant, which encourages entrepreneurship among women researchers. Department of Biotechnology runs a program which is known as Biotechnology Career Advancement and Reorientation Program, BioCare for Women Scientists. Similarly, Department of Science and Technology has a program called Curie, Consolidation of University Research for Innovation and Excellence in Women. DST also, Department of Science and Technology also runs a program, a scheme called Vigyan Jyoti for meritorious girl students of class 9 to 12. There is a wise Kiran scheme of DST which talks about different schemes at different levels for promoting and encouraging more women to participate in India's scientific growth and development. And there are also programs for women innovators and women entrepreneurs. So, Honorable Prime Minister also stressed upon that women would not only be empowered by science, but the science would progress by the contribution of women. So, it has to go hand in hand. This directional approach needs to be strengthened with more participation and involvement of women so that the development of the science and technology, the fruits of science and technology percolate down to the society. Indeed, and when we talk about what else the Indian Science Congress is doing, it is also encouraging young people to come and innovate. So, how one can forget Children's Science Congress, which will also be organized for the young budding innovators this year. Dr. Mishra, how events like these help to stimulate scientific interest and temperament among children? The Children's Science Congress is again a celebrating science and the main aim is to have innovative programs for children that inspires, empowers and expand their mind and world. The Children's Science Congress kindles the curiosity of the children and provide the opportunity to unfold their creativity and stress their imagination. The National Children's Science Congress is another program which is supported by the Department of Science and Technology which is initiated in 1993. It provides children of 10 to 17 years from all over the country a unique opportunity to imbibe the scientific temperament and knowledge through method of science. So the Children's Science Congress motivates, it stimulates the scientific interest and temperament among the children of India. Who would be the budding scientists or the future scientists of India? Dr. Mishra, if you talk about Prime Minister's inaugural address, he majorly talked about the use of science and technology for public welfare and highlighted the lab to land vision. Under India's G20 presidency, India is leading the world with motto Vasudhaya Kutumbakam, treating the world as one family and India at times successfully did this with sharing cost-effective innovations and very reliable technology. Dr. Mishra, how in near future you see India's scientific innovations helping the world at large? The Honorable Prime Minister today noted that it is a matter of pride for every citizen that on India's call, the United Nations has declared the year 2023 as the International Year of Millets. He pointed out that work can be done to improve India's millets and its use, uh, while effective steps can be taken by the scientific community to reduce the post-harvest losses with the help of biotechnology. So this is a sheer example of taking the research and the scientific application from lab to land. And I would like to mention the listeners that India has active bilateral science and technology programs of cooperation with more than 45 countries. And India moved up to fifth rank in the global R&D funding forecast in 2021. 
So India has a strong network of science and technology institutions and trained manpower. Therefore, India through G20 would play a critical role in collaborating and connecting the global partners through research and technology and through its intellectual resources, network of experts, institutions and universities. India's scientific innovation aims to provide solution-centric, cost-effective, viable resources to address the problems of the society at large to bring the prosperity in people's lives. So the contribution of India's science and technology and innovation would find India as Vishwaguru. Definitely, Dr. Mishra. When we talk about India's G20 presidency and how Prime Minister is very vocal about it, addressing about various dimension in which India can lead the world, he also talked and addressed about climate change issues, whether be it in world level or in his public addresses. He also mentioned that we should move forward with science and technology and creating innovations that will help us do development in sustainable ways. How do you see that, Dr. Mishra? India is contributing immensely to address the issues of climate change and G20 has, through this platform, India will discuss and talk about the climate change issues that is so predominant as we see here in India and we are we are moving fast in the direction of quantum computers, chemistry, communication, sensors, so all the new material, new science, and of course, like Honorable Prime Minister underlined the role of science in waste management as municipal solid waste, electronic waste, biomedical waste, agricultural waste. All these would be discussed and addressed, and India would play a very crucial and important role in promoting circular economy, addressing the issues and challenges of climate change. Indian Science Congress is already doing the Children's Science Congress. But what else methods or measurements that can be used to promote science to public so that it is not only limited to the elite or some segment of society, we can make it more of a general topic of discussion or we can promote more in schools? See, the promotion of science, popularizing science is very, very important. It is important for bringing forth a progressive society that is free of all kind of irrational thoughts and practices and it helps developing the nation in all spheres, political, economical, social and cultural. And science communication and popularizing science also helps or the scientific temperament promotes tolerance among people for different thoughts and ideas. So therefore, I think that the importance of scientific temper should start from home from school, from the surrounding where we live, from the environment and it is so important to have a very rational, very, you know, a logical society and according to Article 51A of Indian Constitution, which talks about every citizen is obligated to develop scientific temper, which needs to be put into practice and Government of India is making remarkable contribution through its programs and activities to take science to the masses, to develop this scientific thinking and scientific temperament in the country among the citizens of India. So we need to understand, people need to understand the method that science uses to acquire knowledge, which will help in removing all the irrational thoughts and beliefs which are widespread at times, which is more predominant, can be removed only by creating awareness among the children, among the citizens of India. Indeed, and you very rightly pointed out that it is not only the responsibility of teachers or the government, but it is the collective responsibility to grow and develop scientific temperament. Thank you so much, Dr. Mishra, for joining us today in this conversation. Thank you so much. You were listening to a discussion on the significance of 108th Indian Science Congress. The participants were... Dr. Kinkini Das Gupta Mishra, Senior Scientist Vigyan Prasad and Omvesh Upadhyay, AIR Correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.